Jeff Fike, who found us on Twitter, says Mark Strong holds the distinction of working for both CIA and MI6. You're a very, very flexible and adaptable man. Yeah, I do. And in fact, uh, I was the uh, in Body of Lies. I played the, the head of the uh, Jordanian secret right. service. That's right. <laughs> we spoke to you about that. You're the well, go-to so guy, if exactly, anything. for any secret service. Yes. You could. You, uh, that you. You would be the perfect double, triple, quadruple agent, <laughs> wouldn't you? You'd be absolutely the perfect go-to guy. Uh, so you were explaining just before we heard the Catherine Bigelow uh, clip your your role uh, in in this movie. Was it a fun film to do? Uh, explain what it was like filming on this movie. It was quite chaotic, to be honest. I mean, as Catherine explained, it all came together very quickly. It was shrouded under a lot of secrecy. Scripts didn't go out. I, I went and met them in L.A. and did a scene from the movie not having read the whole script and, in fact, signed up to do the movie without having read the whole script because it wasn't available. Eventually it came on um, email and it was a special system whereby you could read it, but if, if it didn't detect any movement after a few minutes, it would all go fuzzy, so you had to reapply. To it's like Mission it Impossible, this. It really was. It was it shrouded in secrecy, and then suddenly I was told we were going to India to shoot, uh, Jordan to shoot, rather, which then changed to India at the last but minute. You're the head of intelligence at Jordan, so you should have known <laughs> that. I should have known. I should have got in touch with the old guys. But uh, So it was quite, quite chaotic, and people were drafted in who weren't quite sure what they were playing and when, and... It was amazing that it got done at all, and it was all shot very handheld and on the on the go, um, so frenetic. And enjoyable? Uh, hard to enjoy it when it's like that because you're you're grasping at straws all the time. Um, it was great having Mark Boll, the writer, there, but a lot of the writing is very uh, it's ju it's jargon really because he'd really done his uh, homework. So you're you're often as a CIA guy, I found myself saying virtually incomprehensible sentences that I didn't understand and they would be given to me last minute so not enjoyable i love the people as always they're always great um but it was a fairly uh, hectic but after, after the success of hurt locker if catherine bigelow wants you to play a role in the film you're going to say yes of course you? yeah because you know? she is wonderful and were you taken aback by when this whole controversy blew up? I mean, I think we'll review the film next week. I do think it's important to say that I think the film can be in, you know, clearly can be interpreted in many ways. When I saw it, it seemed pretty clear to me what it was saying. And she mentioned it in that interview. It seemed to be that torturing somebody does not get information out of them. Finally, they do something else which produced a piece of information which they had already. And I've, I have now seen the film twice. And for me, it did not say what some people have accused it of saying, but some people have accused it of saying very, very vociferously, and Catherine Bigelow was obviously taken aback. Were you taken aback as well? Yeah, I'm, I'm genuinely surprised at what all the fuss is about. Um, I think any film about that subject matter is bound to include scenes of torture no, if you're of trying to tell the truth. I didn't think that the scenes of torture immediately led to the capture of bin Laden. It's not as if somebody is tortured and then tells them where he is. Um, but no, in fact, she, she highlights... The question, as she did in one of the answers in the interview, which is, could you have got to the death of Osama bin Laden without the harsh tactics, as she calls them, torture as other people would have it? And that, and that's the question, because I think the suggested answer in the film is probably not. Well, I don't I, know. No, I don't know. I'm that's sure. right, because the, because what turns out, I'm sorry, if you don't want plot spoilers, just turn off for the next three minutes, because what turns out is that the only th they, the thing. The thing that they find out later on, which is not actually used to, it turns out to be something they had known all along. I mean, the message that I took... Yes, but would they, would they have found that piece of information which was in the system and not being acted on, then they interrogate this uh, particular guy with the harsh tactics. And they get nothing. And they get nothing, but then later in the process they do get something. And later so... in the process, not doing that, he gives them a piece of information, and it turns out that they had the information all along. I mean, it seemed to me, and as I said, I do understand that you can interpret, you know, the, one of the best things about some movies is that they are open to multiple interpretations but it seemed to me that that was what the film was saying and I have heard Mark Boll actually saying the, the same thing as well so mm. well you say later in the process the thing to remember is this is a movie of two hours that the, the actual hunt took 10 years so if the scenes elide and seem to suggest that a scene of torture then yields this particular piece of information you have to remember this took place over years but so. they don't well, no, they I, don't, but people seem to be suggesting no, that they do. No, OK, sure. well, you've, you've already warned people. So sure. essentially what this process is, if people are going, well, I haven't seen the movie, so can you just... There's a, it's, it's like a good cop, bad cop in extremist situation, whereby this particular person uh, is humiliated and beaten uh, and finally he's put in, he's put in a box and mm. he, then they say, when is, the, when is the attack? When is the attack? And he gives every single day Don't that he can it, yeah. possibly think of. So he's just making and stuff up. And it then up. cuts then from that to the attack which hasn't been stopped. Right. And then later they're all having a very pleasant 
meal and he's offered cigarettes and in the course of that conversation delivers this piece of information. Well, he's led so, to believe that he revealed something. He's, so, he's had sleepless well, I mean, nights. It's all part of that. So it's yeah. all part of the interrogation Quite. and part of the tactics. That's that's the point I'm making. Yeah, and the thing to remember is that it is a story about the hunt for bin Laden and it is inconceivable to me that people don't understand that there was probably, you know, black ops took place. I mean, it seems to happen in every, every conflict all over the world. I don't know why, because the CIA come out and say, you know, this is untrue that we should all necessarily believe Well, of that. course, but my feeling is that, of course, the CIA would have to say that because they couldn't possibly say anything of else. Course, because, yeah. you know, and, and actually that's kind of the moment at which you think, well, all these people saying somehow it's glorifying this. I mean, the moment the CIA come out and say, actually, that's not true, you think, oh, I'm starting to believe it now. Yeah, it's... it's um, the unfortunate thing is, like, like uh, any movie that gets uh, some particular... Uh, 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 point that gets discussed about it, 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 it takes away from the movie itself. Yeah, sure. And the thing to remember is what you said in your uh, initially, it's a really tense, gripping movie. Mm. It's, a, it's a great uh, story. It's really well told. Um, and I think that's the thing that should really come out of it. At the we'll end. talk a little bit more um, about this uh, and some of Mark's other projects as well coming up after the news. Uh, we were talking about Zero Dark Thirty just before the news. Catherine Bigelow was our guest. If you missed that, uh, you can check it on the podcast or you can listen again. Mark Strong is in the movie as a CIA agent, which you did with with aplomb. Thank you very much. A uh, slight demotion from being head of the Jordanian Secret Service. And I would you'd be great. Say, Didn't I see you working? At no, oh, no, no, hold on a second. That's yes. that guy. Yeah, it was what, accent did, what accent did you have to do? I would just a generic, generic American, American accent. American. Yeah. It's, it's great for Brits when we get involved with those American films where you're cast because you're an actor rather than British or American. I enjoyed doing it. The, the only thing was the first scene I had to do was coming in and telling everybody off in no uncertain terms. I hadn't met anyone. I'd, I'd got out to Jordan, I think it was. I was on the hotel, in the hotel on my own that, that evening. Next day I go in there and I have to scream at them all. And they're all sitting there, Jessica's there and Carl and all the people. And um, it was quite nerve-wracking. Well, r rather than uh, getting you to p do the accent like a performing monkey, we can actually hear Mark Strong in Zero Dark Thirty. Here he is. I want to make something absolutely clear. If you thought there was some secret cell somewhere working Al-Qaeda, then I want you to know that you're wrong. This is it. There's no working group coming to the rescue. There's nobody else hidden away on some other floor. There is just us. And we are failing. We're spending billions of dollars. People are dying. We are still no closer to defeating our enemy. What's that sound like? To you just hearing it as a piece of audio? It's you... really strange because that is the, the scene that I did as an audition for them over in LA. Bizarrely, I was there. We were on a, in the hills. It was beautiful sunset. They gave me this piece of paper and they said, this is what we want you to read. Go and think about it for 10 minutes and come back. And Catherine was there and Mark Boll was there and a couple of producers sitting at a table. And I walked in and they all looked up expectantly. And I, I, I excuse me, gave it to them both barrels. I mean, I really went for it. And uh, probably more forcefully than in the actual film. And they were all quite stunned at the end. There was a little silence. And they went, well, um, oh, uh, and they had to give me the job. <laughs> That's fair. I think people are still genuinely surprised when you come on and say, uh, Anne Hathaway a couple of weeks ago was saying she, you know, she was talking about the audition by which she got the role in Les Miserables, which apparently was uh, the most sensational uh, audition they had ever seen. But when people yeah. uh, and actors who've been in so many movies, such as, I mean, you're in everything, mm. you, you still have to audition. I mean, they know what you can do, don't they? Yes, but sometimes they just need to see it. You know, they need to know that you can do the accent. They need to believe that you can, you know, tell off a group of CIA agents sitting around a desk. And, and you know, some actors won't do it, won't read. They won't, they, they'll say, you know my work, you know, but I'm not like that. Did you have to audition for John Carter of Mars? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't. Okay. No, no. I like just sat actually with, with him and then we went through the artwork and everything and, you know, I could be a big bald alien, no problem. Have you seen the film? Yeah. And where does it stand for you? I mean, you know, I, I'm not a fan. Well, I really liked it, but and I thought people were very harsh with well, it. Well, me, the, the, unfortunately. But well, it suffered from the fact, again, the talking point about the movie was the fact that we've seen everything in it before. That's the problem. They were written at the turn of the century, last century, and um, everything, Star Wars, uh, Star Trek, even Tarzan, it all comes from it, really. The idea of science fiction. He was the granddaddy of it all, and so there was nothing in there that really surprised anyone so it looked a bit dated mm. um but having said that i really enjoyed it my kids enjoyed it people i know enjoyed it 
it's uh, you know maybe if you're going to deconstruct it as a as a as a no, critic. It's, hey, it's a... I mean, I, for, I I just really took against it. Um, but hey, I, I'm that's why I was genuinely asking whether you'd seen it and what you thought of it because obviously you know if you work on a big production movie like that, you don't know until the end what it looks like. I have to say I've realised that not only working on a film do you not know what it's going to come out like, but even when I've then been to see it, I've no idea what the reaction is going to be. Yeah, yeah. It's extraordinary how how you could. I, I think people have different different reactions to films depending on where they've seen it, when they've seen it, what sure. they've seen before. I sure. mean, that does make a big difference. At the other end of the scale, uh, Blood is a movie which we talked to Paul Bettany about mm. when he was on the show. This is quite a few months yeah, ago. Yeah, you talked to him. Now, and, and I see no sign of it yet either. Mm. Uh, which, and it was it's a very interesting film, but it's... It's low budget, I imagine. Mm. It's a British, you got a, a British movie. Brian Cox is in it. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Graham is fantastic in it. But are we is that ever going to see the light of day? I'm sure it will, but it's very difficult in um, the current market with big American movies. The number of movies that come out every week. I mean, you just need to look in the papers and see how many are reviewed. Uh, it's hard to find a niche. You need to find somebody who will pick that film up, advertise it, put it into the cinema, and get it out there. Um, and it's a a market that's too full and people are you know careful with their money these days so it's very hard for those little independent british movies to get a look in and uh, uh, just looking at some of the work you're developing at the moment you are extremely busy and much in demand what's coming up for you uh well a, a film called welcome to the punch that uh, iran creevy directed that uh, james mcavoy dave morrissey andrew riseborough are all in is a, an attempt to make a british thriller a london-based british thriller more in the Michael Mann mould than the perhaps Guy Ritchie mould. Uh, it's uh, slick, fast, good, and made for not a huge amount of money, which is very difficult when you're talking about action movies. So hopefully that will work. You had to butch up that. for it as well, didn't you? you had to... I did. Well, not not get big. What I had to do was uh, I was a rock climber. I, I, I got out of the game. Gangster who's out of the game. He's in Iceland. Goes for long walks. Climbs rocks. He's very fit. That's the idea. And the irony was when I got there, they said to me, um, do you want to, are you going to train for this or anything? I went, oh, I don't know. Do I need to train, do you think? And they went, well, no, you look fairly slim and fit. That's... And then I went for the costume fitting and took my shirt off. And afterwards they, <laughs> they sidled up to me and went, I'm a trainer, I think, don't you? <laughs> so um... How, that's, a, that's terrible. Yeah. How did you recover from such a slur? Well, I, I, I thought, OK, well, I'll try it. And I have to say, I've kept it on ever since. So it was a revelation. So, 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 welcome to the punch. But I have a list of. I mean, the, these may be entirely uh, wrong. But I've got Low Winter Sun, Closer to the Moon. Um, Closer to the Moon was a little Romanian. Justin movie. and the Knights of Valor, Mindscape, Before I Go to Sleep, <laughs> Provenance. Yeah, Mindscape is one I've just done in in Spain with a very interesting uh, Spanish first time director, and the crew were all the same guys that worked on the Orphanage and uh, the Impossible right, the Camera yeah. Crew. They're they're absolutely brilliant. Justin and the Knights of Valor is an animated uh, uh, movie which should be out soon. Before I go to sleep, I'm about to go and do with Colin Firth and Nicole Kidman. Do you want to just run through the movies that you're not in? There, uh, there are some, apparently. There but are some. Slipped through but it always amazes me. People always go, oh, God, you're in everything and you're so busy. But actually, if you look, there are, you know, if you are lucky enough to to work, you go from no, film course, to film. Course, like that. Everybody who, who, you know, you could look at any successful actor and say, they're in everything. They're, they're, they're always working. I think the thing that's interesting about you is that you managed to be in a lot of very, very different movies and quite often people see two or three movies that you're in and don't realise it's the same guy. And I think that's, you know, that's the key to it. It's not just like, oh, we need a... We, we'll do it. You said yourself last time you were on, you said you have this very non-specific look that you can play, you know, somebody who comes from a number of different areas and, you're very, and you have a talent with accents. And, you know, in America they call it character acting. Here we call it acting. Yeah, but I, lo I love that, you know, but I come from the theatre. That's what I trained for and that's what I did for 10 years before... I got in front of a camera and that was all about dressing up and persuading people that you're not what you look like. And I love that whenever possible to, to, to put on someone else's wig, coat, shoes and, and do something else, you know. So and, and often I'll take something on the basis of what I've just done. So if it's very different, like John Carter of Mars, I, I you know, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, now, the uh, the Mark Strong butt game is uh, is, is, what, is one of is our favourites. still going strong? Yeah, it's still, it's still going strong. Now, this, oh, uh, for, 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 for new listeners, this is uh, a game suggested by Mark. This is where, in fact, we did talk about um, how it, in many movies you get and or with. Hmm. Uh, ask for the and. This was uh, discussed yes. quite a lot. Tom Wilkinson. Tom Wilkinson. That up, that's originally. right. Tom Wilkinson said, "Ask for the end." That's the because he did that South African uh, secret intelligence movie with uh, that's right. and he got uh, he got the end. Uh, so Mark's version is uh, you go through all the cast and you have a butt who's the person who actually spoils it. So we and then we got um, Bram Stoker's Dracula, starring Gary Oldman, Anthony Hopkins, butt Keanu Reeves. Exactly. <laughs> where, where, where did where did this 
come from? Because I it's don't a, know. It's I, a good I, game. It just we just came up with it one time, and the, my, the terrifying thing is I'm waiting to be hoisted by my own petard. Oh, it will happen. You know, it will happen. Oh, I, I, I'm will trying to think along. of what the but Mark Strong film is. <laughs> there must be something which is. I mean, I would say to be honest with you, John Carter of Mars, which is terrible, but. Mark Strong, so, you know, but... <laughs> 1994's On Deadly Ground, this was from a, a, an email from Andrew Bracey, starring, Stings... starring Michael Caine, Billy Bob Thornton and John C. McGinley, but, but... not only starring but directed by... Stephen Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Which is terrific. Saving Private Ryan, starring Tom Hanks, Ed Burns, Barry Pepper, Adam Goldberg, Jeremy Davis, Ted Danson, Paul Giamatti, Ryan Hurst, but Vin Diesel. <laughs> See, the trouble is you're going to work, you can't laugh now because you're going to be working no. with these people. Nor can I say any of them. Four Weddings and a Funeral, starring Hugh Grant, Simon Callow, John Hanna, Kristen Stott Thomas, but Andy McDowell. Groundhog Day, starring Bill Murray, but Andy McDowell. Thank you, Ed. You see, basically, pick on someone you don't like <laughs> and right. send, and send in that there. in. Yeah. So yeah. is this played quite a lot in the acting fraternity? No, I, I, I remember doing it with somebody once and then I remember telling it to you because I'd listened to the Tom Wilkinson and interview. And now it'll never go away. Well, well, that's good. Maybe that's good. Uh, it's always fantastic to have you with us and I hope you can still continue to do the voiceover for uh, Who Do You Think You Are? Oh, yeah, no, that's that been going on for, for years now. And that's I a nice enjoy little retainer. It. Well, I, I actually think it's a really good programme. Oh, it's an absolutely fantastic programme. Mm. And I wonder if they've ever thought of doing you. That has come up, the idea of that. But um, I, I don't really know my history That's very the whole well. point. That's they the have point. a team. That's how it works. Do you not watch the programme? I'm terrified <laughs> of what came up, to be honest. That would be really a, a really neat idea, because you could then narrate to voice yourself. yourself. <clears throat> At this Mark point... is surprised to discover that there's a voice in his head narrating his life, just like that film Stranger Than Fiction with Emma Thompson. <laughs> but you know, you know when, they, when they, they, they take the subject, they take them through uh, all the discovery, they don't know what's coming up, genuinely. So they, they're given a piece of paper and said, you know, this will lead to this place. They, they, the subject doesn't know um, um, where they're headed. And that would terrify me. It was at this point that Mark discovered that his much beloved great great grandmother was actually uh, a criminal and had been sent to prison, and he's now deeply shaped. All that kind of stuff would be great. Yeah. Well, Patsy Kensit did it, I remember, memorably, and was very worried because she thought her family would come from a sort of line of ne'er do wells and found out that one of her ancestors was this uh, fantastically uh, erudite uh, a priest who lived in Tower Hamlets and taken care of. Lots of um, I don't unfortunate think, people. I don't think John Hurt has got over yet the fact that um, he made a big thing of his Irish ancestry, then it turned out, according to the programme, that there was none. No, he's from Croydon. <laughs> That's right. Well, I, I've interviewed him since, and he's he thinks that the research was probably wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the next thing that we see you in, well, Zero Dark Thirty, uh, obviously, is the, is the next thing we'll see you in, mm. and after that, it'll be... Welcome to the punch. Welcome to the punch. Mark Strong, thank you very much indeed. We really appreciate you coming in. Just before you go, because I think, unlike most actors that come in, mm -hmm. you've actually seen other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, one movie that you would recommend, a performance that you would recommend, that we absolutely should go and see and not miss, of stuff that's around now. Uh, that's very. Um, that's a very tricky one. I, uh... I'm asking you to be complimentary about something. I can't, I, can, I can't really think. I mean, I really enjoyed um, Leonardo DiCaprio in, in Django Unchained because that's we're, something we're about to go to the. In just are you a okay? Well, I don't want to preempt anything. No, but... we're here. I'm going to ask you one preemptive question. Too long? The film, mm -hmm. without doubt. Thank you. But Leonardo DiCaprio, too long? No, excellent. No, Doing something I've not seen him ever do before. Which is be horrible, uh, be and, vile. In fact. And yes, I mean, and and enjoy it and be believable. And uh, it, he's he's extremely good. And Christoph Waltz is also uh, terrific. You've teed it up nicely. We'll talk Django next. Mark Strong, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate you coming in. Today. Thanks for having me.